you know now let's you know consider this uh, issue of uh, shadowing or soiling so if you have a panel which is uh, placed uh, on uh, you know placed uh, in a residential neighborhood and you have a building adjacent to it this building won't cause any shading uh, during the noon but especially during the mornings and during the evenings when the shadow of this uh, becomes long it can cause a shading uh, on your panel okay so a similar thing which can happen is uh, let's say you place these uh, panels somewhere in the mid east right or somewhere in a desert and you'll have a soil coming in uh, from the wind and it will get uh, you know deposited or get uh, placed on top of these panels right so what happens uh, or you know what do you do to the panel to minimize these uh, shadowing or soiling loss okay so let's say i have this panel that has 72 cells 72 cells mean roughly an output of uh, 50 volt and uh, I'll connect many of these panels uh, in series, so let's say six panels in series, and that will give me 300 volt. Okay, so now this is some experimental data, and uh, this is uh, collected uh, uh, for a panel placed uh, in LA, and you see that uh, you know as uh, this is uh, over a course of one year. And you see that your panel efficiency it essentially keeps on uh, dropping because you have these birds pooping on the panel or some dust coming on the panel. And you know, let's say in mid fall you have a shower of rain, and sometimes that helps. It uh, helps in reducing these uh, soiling effects and also these bird poops, and it cleans it up, and you see a certain 40% increase in your efficiency. So these are very real effects that you observe uh, um, in panels. And uh, the way to mitigate this is, uh, you know, by doing some uh, uh, design in terms of your bypass diodes. So this is another example. So a popular uh, concept, especially for uh, uh, you know, build, especially for places where there's a lot of new construction happening, is this term called uh, BIPV, or it's uh, building integrated PV. So a large part of your uh, system, large part of your total install cost comes due to, uh, large part of your total system cost comes due to the installation cost, right? But if you are if you are placing this panel while you are doing the construction, right? While you are constructing the building, you can reduce that installation cost substantially, right? It's it's if you want to like install a panel on your house right now a large part of it uh, the total cost that you pay is going to be just the install cost versus if that panel were installed while your house was being built you can reduce that substantially so this field of BIPV it's uh, uh, you know it's uh, especially for places where there's a lot of new construction happening it makes a lot of sense to put solar uh, while you are uh, making the building and that field is called BIPV building integrated PV so this is a, a building here in the valley and you see that they have placed this panel on the south facing uh, facade of their uh, building and you can clearly see you know, there are these trees placed over here and they'll cast a shadow on top of these panels especially uh, you know when you're uh, so there's you know there's a big issue of shading uh, which especially becomes even more important when you have this uh, BIPV system. So here's another uh, BIPV system. This is in fact the headquarters of uh, SunTech. And this is I think based in the city of uh, Wuxi in, uh, in, uh, in South China. And uh, actually South uh, Eastern China. And they have again they have on the southern face, uh, southern face of their whole building they have place this thing this is called a uh, solar wall curtain or solar curtain where you essentially their buildings are actually inside so the buildings are beside or behind this uh, whole curtain and it uh, you know it minimizes the amount of heat or amount of uh, uh, air conditioning that you have to use to maintain the temperature in the building and it's usually on the south facing uh, if you're in the northern hemisphere the south facing wall of your uh, uh, of your building right so you can see they have tilted it a little bit uh, uh, as well so this is how it looks from the inside so you see the buildings are actually inside this this is a curtain outside the building and uh, uh, you see that these are partially uh, 
uh, partially transparent panel so they are letting some light in and uh, so instead of using that uh, you know uh, piece of tailor you have placed this uh, panel on say a transparent uh, glass or something else so it lets light through uh, from places where they are not uh, solar pan solar cells are not there so it lets some part of the light through and uh, at the same time it generates uh, uh, electricity as well so again you can see over here there you know there are these trees which are placed over here there are these flags over here so these are all thing which will cause shading uh, in this uh, in this system okay so how do we how do we calculate this shading? So this is something that you will do in your you know, problem set four. Maybe you will put a problem over here. So the way you you know calculate the effect of the shading is just treat this system like a circuit, right? So what it is is it's it's a bunch of diodes. They are connected in series and parallel. And when I'm when I'm uh, causing the shading or soiling, I'm essentially you know turning off or I'm uh, I'm opening up the circuit on uh, each of these uh, individual diodes. Okay. So this this program, what it does is essentially it stands for this PV shading and soiling uh, simulator, and you can specify your module geometry, and it calculates this spice file, which is you know electrical engineer who simulate uh, circuits are very similar, very familiar with it. So it generates this uh, spice file, which just creates this whole panel as. Uh, uh, as a circuit uh, composed of these uh, diodes. Okay, so now here's the result from that uh, simulation. So you see this panel over here. It has uh, uh, six uh, rows of these uh, cells, and uh, I'm causing, uh, you know, I'm simulating it with different amount of shading. So let's say this sh uh, particular case B. So what I've done over here is that I've covered two of these rows uh, with my, uh, with you know, I've shorted maybe, uh, not shorted, but you know, I've shaded a uh, few of these cells in these uh, two rows. So what will happen is essentially if all of them were uh, connected in series, the whole panel will shut off. But thankfully we had, uh, let's say, bypass diodes between each of these rows, so we had uh, Three of these bypass diodes over here. So when I'm causing a shade which is like this, I'll turn off maybe one third of this panel. Okay, so my efficiency will drop to maybe 66 percent. Similarly, if I have a shade which is uh, like this, it will turn off uh, two third of the panel. It will turn off this two third of the panel, but this one third will still be turned off. If I have a shade like this, I have now essentially shaded. Uh, uh, none of my bypass diodes uh, can give me any relief and my efficiency will completely drop and it will be very low. Okay? So if you are placing this panel especially in, in regions where you expect a lot of shading it makes a lot of sense to put more and more of these uh, bypass diodes. And uh, sometimes what people do is instead of just placing these bypass diodes uh, in, on the long sides they also place it uh, on the uh, uh, just placing them on the short side, they place them on the long side as well. And if you do that, it's called you know both series and parallel uh, connection of these bypass diodes. So in fact, if you place a lot of these bypass diodes, that can give you uh, increased immunity to the shading. But again, bear in mind that that will come at this uh, increased cost of putting a lot of these bypass. Diodes. Okay, so. So this is a case, a most realistic uh, case where you have, you know, maybe a few leaves and you have uh, a lot of this bird poop, right? So you see that your efficiency will drop uh, uh, substantially and you don't need to occupy, it won't drop linearly as a function of area, it will depend upon where the shading is coming on, whether it's turning off, uh, whether if all of them are located, all of this bird poop and leaf are located on just this part of the panel, you can still get a higher efficiency. But if they are spread across the whole panel, then the uh, then your efficiency will drop uh, very rapidly. And again, the the way to alleviate that is to place more and more of these bypass diodes. Okay. Same thing. So another thing which you need to keep into account or uh, keep uh, that in your mind is how closely you place this panel. 
Okay, and this is something which is also uh, determined by shading concerns. Right, so if you place these panels uh, very close to each other, so if you increase this uh, or decrease this ratio of this gap uh, versus uh, the pitch, in the mor in the afternoon it's fine, but uh, during the evenings or uh, during the morning when you have light coming at an angle, this thing can cast a long shadow and it can shade out uh, this other side. Okay. So especially remember we talked about that uh, when you have a, a panel at a fixed tilt you get this uh, cosine uh, kind of uh, curve uh, in the morning you have uh, over your hair in the evening you are over hair in the noon you are or in the middle what will happen if you if you place these panels away close to each other is that you will shave off this slice so this slice uh, in the morning and evening will essentially get shaved off okay so um, that determines you know how closely you can uh, place these panels another thing i mentioned to you well, the optimal tilt of these panels should be equal to the latitude remember we mentioned that if you are uh, let's say living in the bay area where you have a latitude of uh, uh, you know you have this 36 degrees your panels should be placed at that tilt but usually people place it at a lower tilt as compared to this. Most of the panels which are installed in the Bay Area, for example, they have a tilt of uh, 20. One reason for that is to uh, cause less shading. The other thing is you want to maximize it for the summer months because uh, that's, uh, that's where your, your intensity of light is higher. So both of the, because both of those reasons, these panels are usually installed at an angle which is much lower than your uh, latitude at that point. Okay. So this is, uh, for example, showing that effect of that tilt. So if you are placing this panel uh, you know, at a tilt of uh, a 35 degree versus if you are placing it at a tilt of 20 degree. So if you are less tilt, your, uh, your, your amount of uh, shading loss is lower. And if you are going to higher and higher tilt, your amount of shading loss uh, can become substantial. So this shading loss is another consideration that you need to take into account while you are determining what angle to place these panels. So all these things will come handy when you're you know you're doing your project and determine what angle to place it at. Okay. So now let me ask you this question. So I have this you know I've determined I'll go with the tilt and I'll you know make these structures. Maybe I'm placing them on top of uh, let's say Walmart and I'm designing these racks. So I have this option and I figured out my optimal tilt angle, okay. So I have this option whether to place this panel like this or whether to place this panel like this when I'm placing them on this rack. Okay, so uh, which option should I choose? Should I place them uh, in, a, um, in a landscape mode or should I place them in a portrait mode? This is my portrait mode, this is my landscape mode. So, what do you think? Landscape. All of you. A anybody think portrait? Okay, why landscape? Okay, so, yeah, him, you are correct that one of the reasons is that sharing will be less. Is there another reason? Huh? Easier to mount. Wow. But at the same time, I'll leave. I'll need more of these racks, right? Whereas if I'm was mounting them in a portrait mode, I'll be spread of Okay. Do you think taller means? Uh, Okay, so yeah, there are two reasons. One is uh, less shading, one is, uh, one is uh, I didn't think of that, but yeah, maybe mechanical uh, stability of that. You are not on huh. I guess there's one more reason. Yeah, so one more reason, something I mentioned earlier, I told you to keep that in mind. Yeah, 
so which is better for for the from the point of view of bipolar guy? Portrait is better. Think again. Where are these diodes located? On the shorted side, right? So, and where would this shading occur? If it occurs, right? If this if this shade comes in, right? Where would it come in on the panel? It would come in like you know. It would essentially black out, say, this part of my panel. Right? Similarly, over here. In the morning and evening, it would black out this part of the panel. Okay, so now which one is better? Landscape, right? I mean, if if I blank out this part in a portrait and my bypass diodes are, uh, you know, all located here, you know, this thing is completely gone. Versus if I blank, if I black out this part uh, in the landscape mode, then uh, you know I'll still get the uh, rest of my uh, cell group. Just that I'll need less of them because you know more of them are in series. If I connect them on the longer end, I'll need more of them. Okay, so. Uh, you could, yeah. So I mean, you could like place a like just place a bipolar diode at that bottom, like place a higher density of bipolar diode at the bottom. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, like place more diodes here. Uh, yeah. In principle, you can, but you'll have to do for each of these strings. So I don't know if somebody does that or not. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's something, but that's a good idea, maybe. Yeah, so I'm not sure if somebody goes it, but it's a good idea. But you were against the portrait anyway, why? Are you? <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, in principle, yes, like if you want to like, make it compact and do some bypass diode in there. Uh, you could do that at the bottom part of the 